Published in 1960, The Scarlet Ibis is a short story written by James Hurst. This literary masterpiece, through its distinct foreshadowing, symbolism, and imagery expresses a disturbing story of the relationship between two brothers. One brother, called Doodle, was born with serious physical disabilities and health problems. The other brother, the story's narrator, is not named but rather is known throughout the story as a brother. Brother is the eldest and is desperate, sometimes using extreme and harsh methods to turn Doodle into a normal kid. Brother recounts the life of his younger brother, William Armstrong, nicknamed Ow Doodle. Doodle was born a very sickly child and was not expected to live much past birth. His family had a small coffin made in case of his death. Doodle survived his baby years, but for most of that time, he was unable to move or respond to his environment. Brother was often frustrated by this, and once even went so far as planning to smother the baby Doodle with a pillow, thinking that having no brother was better than having a brother who did not functional normally. Luckily, Doodle smiled at Brother before being smothered. Brother, overjoyed by Doodle's smile, decided not to smother him. Doodle eventually learned to crawl, even though the doctor said the strain of even sitting up might kill him because of his weak heart. After this forward progress and learning how to crawl, Doodle at one point crawled backwards. This reminded brother of a doodle bug, which is what led to William's nickname Doodle. Doodle remained weak and feeble as a young boy. Brother wanted someone who could run and jump and play with him. Brother resented having the weak and fragile Doodle as a brother. Doodle was so weak brother had to pull him around in a wooden go-kart their father had built because of Doodle's frailty. It was at this point that brother decided to train Doodle to be what brother perceived to be a normal human being, and as a result, he took Doodle down to the swamp to teach him how to walk. Shortly before his sixth birthday, Doodle learned to walk with help from brother. Encouraged by this, brother decided to teach Doodle how to run, climb vines, swim, row, and even fight to prepare him for the harsh realities of school. Brother felt that Doodle would not survive in school without these skills, and he constantly pushed to toughen Doodle up. Almost a year after Brother's training plan for Doodle was made, Doodle was far from accomplishing the goals set forth by Brother. One day, around that time, a red bird appeared in the family's garden, looking sick and tired. The boy's father identified it as a scarlet ibis, a rare and unique tropical bird blown off course by a recent storm. The bird was weak and died. When the bird died, Doodle felt sorry for it and buried it. The rest of the family looked on and laughed at Doodle. Afterwards, the boys went to the nearby horsehead landing to continue Doodle's training. On their way home, brother wanted Doodle to practice rowing. Suddenly, a rainstorm came, and when they reached the riverbank, Doodle was tired and frightened. Brother, angry and frustrated that Doodle could not finish his training, ran ahead of Doodle, leaving his frightened younger brother behind. When brother did not see Doodle, he returned to look for Doodle after his intense anger had dissipated. To his horror, brother found Doodle lifeless, lying on the ground, with blood flowing out of his mouth, staining his throat and shirt a brilliant red color. This story is rich in symbolism and meaning. We see the foreshadowing of Doodle's death when the Scarlet Ibis dies. Doodle died like the Scarlet Ibis, bloody, red, and far away from home, and like the Scarlet Ibis, Doodle was also rare and unique. The Scarlet Ibis was weak and fragile, out of place in the family's yard. Doodle was also weak, fragile, and out of place in his world. In response, Doodle's family, especially brother, did not accept him. They did not accept his compassionate nature, which their behavior showed when Doodle buried the dead bird, they did not accept his physical disabilities either. Rather, brother forced and pushed Doodle to be someone different than who he was, which sadly led to the young Doodle's death. If brother could have seen Doodle for who he was, and had taken a position of acceptance and tolerance, perhaps Doodle could have lived longer and with the freedom to realize his own true, full potential. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.